Hello again, this is the class of data structure and algorithms. We learn about the analysis of algorithms before. And this video, we will move on to the next section, which is related to the uh, pick O analysis. Okay. So we already learned about the important functions in the data structures and algorithms. So for example, you can calculate the, um, some important things about the complexity with regard to the experiment. So if you have two algorithms, uh, for example, this is the algorithms about the sorting algorithms, and then you can choose which one is better in terms of the computation time. For example, in this case, yeah, we have the insertion sort and the merge sort. Uh, those two are the algorithms, but for the sort using the insertion sort, it takes 70 hours for 1 million items. And while you are using the merge sort, you can have only 40 seconds. Of course, this big difference, you may consider to use merge sort. Okay, why? Because the merge sort can perform much faster than the insertion sort. So in this case, uh, we want to check how can we analyze the algorithm. Because if you run the algorithm until 70 hours, of course, it will consume a lot of times. And uh, you, you cannot do with this kind of environment, uh, especially if you have only a laptop or if you have very small devices, for example, if you have your only smartphone, then we want to check based on the theoretical analysis. So the theoretical analysis, yeah, we can just consider the function that you calculate from the operation. So last time we learned about the operations from this counting primitive operation. And today we are going to learn about the big O notation. So what is big O notation? At the first part of the notation, uh, we want to learn about the function. Okay. So we have big O. We call it big O because it is a uh, yeah, big one. Okay. We, we call it this is O or we can say this is the operation. Okay. So using this uh, big O operation, uh, this big O notation, we want to check the Fn and the Gn. Okay? So there are two, the Fn and Gn. And these two functions we want to compare. And we want to check if there are positive constants. So what is the meaning by positive constants? So we want to check the C. Okay? So we want to check the C if there is a C and NO. NO is the initial value of the n and it means the number of size of the input, the number of size of your data. Okay, so the function is something like this one. So if fn is less than or equal to the c multiplied by the gn. So gn is another function that you want to check. Okay, and this one there exists the n is is greater than n zero. So for every n. Okay. For every data set, which is greater than the initial data set, okay. so this is the initial data set. And oops, ah, okay, my, my writing is not good. Okay, so the, the n zero is the initial data set, and the n is any data set that is greater than the initial data set. So, for example, if I have the n two n plus ten, okay. So we have two and plus ten. This one and this one is O n. Okay. I want to know if it is uh really O n or not. Okay. So we have two n plus ten, which is less than equal to the C n. So this is the uh, um you need to check if really there is a constant C. Okay, so I want to know if the 2n plus 10, I want to know if the 2n plus 10 is really n. Okay, then yeah, I can just change this one. Okay, this is the mathematical, just the mathematical stuff. I have 10, which is less than equal to the cn minus 2n. And then if you accumulate and if you reverse the position, then you will get the c minus 2, and we will multiply with n, which is greater than equal than 10. and yeah, we will have this equation. So we have n, n which is greater than 10 divided by c minus 2. Then you need to find what is the c. Okay? 
So for example, any Z, let's say you pick C equals to three, and then you have the N zero equals to 10. Then what is it? Of course, if you have the C equals to three, so you have 10 okay, divided by three minus two. So there will be a constant. This one, maybe we can say this is 10 divided by one. So there is a positive constant, okay? The positive constant is three. Yeah, the positive constant is three, and then we will get the 10, and 10, it means this is the initial value. So the initial value, which is 10, you can have any number above 10, and the execution time or the operation time will be keep the same with the number of this element, okay? So if you have 20, then yeah, it depends on the 20 uh, number of the data. If you have 100 data, then it will depend on the 100 data. So it will be fixed according to the n, according to the number of data. Let's have another example. <clears throat> so I want to know if the n power of two is not O n. Okay, what does it mean? I want to check if the power the this function, the n power of two is not big O notation with only n. N is the linear function. Okay, so if you can have this symbol, okay, so n power of two is less than equal to c n, c multiplied by n. And by the arithmetic operation, we know that yeah, we can just omit the square here, and you can have the n which is less than c. So is there any n which is less than c? Yeah. So the above inequality cannot be satisfied since c must be a constant. Okay. So if a constant then yeah, it's not valid because n can be varied. n is different in accordance to the data that you have. Okay. So whenever you have the data 10, then c is not available because c is a constant. Yeah. Then yeah, this is not the case for n power of 2 equals to o n. Then yeah, you can say that this big O example for the n power of two is not O n, but maybe it is another function. Okay. So by the proving of this one, you can check whether your big O notation or the operation that you check from the primitive operation that you already had before, is it the same of the concept with the big O or not? Let's say with more examples like this one, we have seven n minus two. What is the big O? Okay. So the big O of this function is like this one. If we have the seven n minus two, I can say this is O n. Why? Because if we have the constant c, which is greater than zero, and there will be an n zero, which is greater than equal to one. Okay. So we have c, c which is seven and n zero is one, then yeah, it is uh, valid that the uh, n, yeah, if n is greater than equal to one, you can say that it is n. What about the second function? Three n power of three, 20 plus 20 n power of two plus five. Okay, so we can have this one. We can say this is the o n, power of three. Why? Because we have the C is greater than zero and N zero is greater than one. And we will have the C, okay, C is equal to four and there is a N value and in N zero, which is the initial value of 21. And well, you, you can do with the same thing that with the way that you already had before. Okay, so with this, kind of mechanism, then you can get what is the n and what is the c. And based on those one, we can have the o n, which is o n power of three. The other example, we have three log n and five is o log n. Okay. Why we have this one? Okay. So if you check again with the function, with the arithmetic operation, you can have that the c, which is equal to eight, and the n zero, which is equal to two, is uh, available with the condition that we already said before. Okay. 
I don't want to discuss more details about how can we get the C and the N0, but in the concept of the big O, the big O notation gives an upper bound on the growth rate of a function. So it means if it is uh, Fn is OGN, okay, Fn is OGN, it means that the growth rate of the Fn is no more than the growth rate of GN. Okay, so one more time, the Fn is OGN means that the growth rate of Fn is no more than the growth rate of GN. Okay. So we will again use the big O notation to rank functions according to the grid rate. Mm -hmm. So if you have that uh, GN grows more, then FN is OGN. Yes. Okay. But what about if GN grows more and what about the FN? So GN is OFN? No. Okay. What about FN if FN is grows more? Is if FN is growing more then this Fn is OGN is no, but the Gn is OFN is yes. However, if they are growing at the uh, same uh, phase, so we can have the yes and yes for both of those. Okay, so let's see uh, some more examples later. Like this one, I can have the rules. Okay? So before you already see how can we define the big O, but for simplicity, the rules in big O notation, there are two. First, we can just drop the lower order. Okay, We can just drop the lower order. What is the lower order? Mm -hmm. If you have like uh, three and power of three, uh, oops, I, yeah, this one is three plus uh, n power of 2 plus, for example, n. Okay, so if we have the 3 n power of 3, n power of 2, and n, so we can just disregard this one because it is the lower order. Okay, the lower order terms is not necessary, but we want to check only the greatest one. And also, we can drop the constant factors. Let's say if it is like 3 and power of 2, and we have uh, plus n, and then let's say plus 15. Okay, so the 15 is a constant. Okay, we don't need this constant actually, we can just remove this one, and based on the first rule, we can just delete the lower order. Then what you can get is only the higher order. So if you have 2n, okay, for example, this is the 2n, then we can say that the big O is O-n. Okay? But not this one. O the 2n is O-n power of 2. Okay? So this is no. Okay? Because we are going to get the smallest possible class of functions. Okay? And we need to get the simple expression of the class. For example, 3n plus 5, you can just get the O-n. Why? Because we have this and n. Okay. So the O n, the big note O notation, we don't need to have the constant here. Okay. We can need the constant here. So we just have the O n. Okay. So this one is not necessary because you just want to know whether it is linear or quadratic or exponential and so on. So the function is uh, necessary, but the constant or the coefficient is not necessary for the big O rules. So we call this is the asymptotic algorithm analysis. So it's asymptotic analysis of an algorithm that determines the running time of the big O. So this is what we already saw in the first slide about the best case, worst case, and the average case. So the asymptotic analysis is to find the worst case, which is about the primitive operation executed as a function of the input size. Okay. So this is the n. Okay. And we express this function with big O notation. Let's say if we have the fine max, okay, the one that we already have before, uh, it is in the O n. Okay. If you still remember, before we have like the 4 n plus 5, which is the minimum. Okay. And then we have the 5 n plus 5. 
which is the maximum or we can say the 4n plus 5 is the best case and 5n plus 5 it is the worst case the worst case will be yeah, the value that you want to get so since the constant factors and the lower order terms are eventually dropped anyway so we can disregard them when counting primitive operations so we just get the low the order term this one and we can just we can say that the big o yeah, the big o because this is the best case and this is the worst case so the big o is o n okay now you have another things here this is another example about prefix averages okay what is prefix averages so we want to illustrate the asymptotic analysis with two algorithms for prefix averages let's say this one is the i prefix averages so the i prefix averages of the array is the average of the first i plus one element so for example i have the ai so the element this this average will be the x0 plus x1 plus blah 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 until xi and then we will divide with i plus one okay so if i have like one element one element two element until five for example then you will have this element and then we will divide it with the five so we will get this is the average in the index of five okay so this kind of array is a kind of application in the financial and we want to know how big is the uh, computational time but you don't need to implement those because we can just check from the pseudocode okay so let's say this is the first pseudocode that you have and this uh, function is quadratic why okay you can see this one so we have the if you calculate with uh, um, the primitive operation so you, you can have this one is constant like two and then this is another constant so one two and three and then okay so we have the for loop so the first for loop is the kind of n okay and then after you have the n you will do the total which is equal to zero see so this is only n because this is only one operation but you have another which is i in the range of j plus one so the j okay the j will be from zero until the n okay so this beginning computing of the s zero until the s j so because we are we will have the worst case which is until n so we can say that this n multiplied by n here okay so there will be n times and we will multiply it with the other n times so we have this one and you know this operation is uh, just a very primitive operation which is one two three okay so there are three operation operations and if you calculate those then we can say that it is the n power of two okay why it is n power of two yeah, this is the summation with this one as i mentioned to you the first n is on an operation the primitive operation from the index zero until n and the next one is also another operation from the index zero until n so it means the n multiplied by n so we can have n power of two so the prefix average okay, the prefix average one this is the this is this one is the operation will which take about o n power of two okay then this arithmetic progression uh, still consume a lot of time okay now if i want to improve this algorithm okay so this algorithm uh, can be improved with this way okay so you already learned about the python you can shorten the function in python and let's say we have the for loop this is j in the range n so we have n okay as you might know that the constant or the yeah the primitive operation just calculate the constant like two five ten okay so this will not be so important okay so i will not do this one because 
this will not be counted in the big O notation. And then we have this N, and you can see here the summation, okay, the summation in Python, uh, it will also do the same thing like what you already did in the for loop. So in the for loop of the iteration, you will start the uh, uh, iteration from zero, okay, and you will do all the operation until j plus one. So you want to uh, do the operation from zero until j plus one, and j plus one will be the, the worst case of j plus one will be the same with the n. So I can say that the summation here also will take, oops, yeah. So the summation here will take about the n times. So we have n and n, so the perfect average still have the n part of two, okay? So the first n is the for loop here, and the second n is the summation from zero until j plus one. And the worst case, j plus one will be the same with n. So we have n multiplied by n, then the result of those two lines will be n multiplied by n. Okay, then the result is o n power two. Now, if I want to improve again, can I improve the prefix average? Now you can see. This is another improvement with the algorithm of the uh, prefix averages. And yes, you can see that this is another primitive operation, primitive operation, primitive operation. And those primitive operation just take a constant. So you don't need to consider that one. And then we have the 4n. Okay. Now the 4n here, we have the n. Okay, we need to consider this one. Now you can check the total plus equal sg. What is it? Yeah, you can see that this is the total okay, equals to the total plus the s in the index of j. Okay. What is index of j? So the index of j is any numbers in your data, which is from the range until n. And then we have the AG, okay, AG, this is the average of the J. You want to get the total, and the total that you want to get here will be divided with the J plus one. Oh, okay. Then this is also one operation, okay? Uh, not, not one operation, but it is a simple operation. In this case, we have one, Two, three. So the operation, the primitive operation is three. How about here? It's one, two, three, four. So there are four kind of operations here, and you know that it is the constant. Okay. So this constants may not be counted in the big O. That's why. Yeah, we can just say that this will take only n times because the for loop will do from j. This is equal to zero until n, and it will be going for all these two processes with the constant. So the constant will not be so matter, and the result will be for n. Okay. Now, if you check this one, which one is the algorithm that you want to use? Of course, you want to use the O n. That is the best one according to the complexity analysis with big O. So what you need to review later in the mathematics, okay? I don't want to discuss more about this one, but I guess you know about the logarithmic function and about some exponential function, then you need to understand this one, okay? Maybe I will just give you a very brief um, questions and you need in the e-class later about this property, okay? For example, if you have the log basis B and then you have X multiplied by Y, then basically, the properties will be log basis b x plus log basis b y. Okay. So if you have the x divided by y, so it is the minus. Okay. If you have this function, then you have the a. A it can be the constant. Okay. So the constant of the function in the x a can be uh, go. It, it can go to the first and it will just uh, calculate the log b with the value of x and then we will multiply with a, okay? So those 
properties of logarithms can be important when you do with the big O notation. And also with the exponential, like this one, a power of b plus c, it can be separated into two, which is a power of b multiplied a power of c. Okay. And also a power of b multiplied by c, it can be separated into two, a power of b, and then we want to power again, or we want to do the exponential exponent again with c. Okay. So those kind of things, yeah, they will be necessary for the PICO analysis. And for the other families of the big O, you can think uh, not only big O, but there is also another uh, terms about big omega and big theta. So what are they? Okay. The first is about the big omega. If you already know that the big O is the function that the Fn, okay, it should be less than or equal to the C, okay, C, which is the constant of G, N, okay. Or yeah, you can have this C is just making it as the O, okay. But what about the big O? So in the big O is uh, F N, yeah, sorry, big omega. In big omega is the if there is a function of fn which is greater than the big o of gn okay and what about the big data in the big data we will have like the fn you know, maybe the simple explanation is the fn which is equal to the big o of the gn okay so using this one, we can get the uh, three, okay? So this is the big O notation, and then this is the big omega notation, and then this is the big theta notation, okay? So the, yeah, this is the uh, simplified version. So the big O is less than or equal to GN, big omega is greater than or equal to GN, and the big theta just say that it is equal, okay? So the same with uh, what I mentioned here, yeah. okay? Now, let's see, what is this one, okay? Uh, F, uh, N, is, is this N, this one, okay? This is the F, N. So, 5 N power of 2 is omega N power of 2. True or false? True, okay, why? Yeah, because uh, if you want to calculate with the uh, arithmetic operation that we will to learn in the first time, of course, yeah, you can get the uh, C equals to five and N zero uh, equals to one. So yeah, if it is the omega, it means the Fn, what is omega? Omega is Fn is greater than or equal to the Gn. Okay. Then you can have this one, the n power of 2 is greater than equal to the gn. So the gn is the n power of 2. Then, yeah, it's true. Okay. Now, what about fn power of 2? This one, n power of 2 is omega n. Okay. Yes, it is true because the same with the first function. So the fn with this big omega, it is greater than cn, okay? Now, what about the last one? F, uh, 5 n power of 2 is the big theta n power of 2. Is it true? Yes, it is true because we have the fn, okay? It is equal to the gn, Okay, oh sorry, I don't know, my pen is something wrong. Then we can get that this is true. Okay, so Fn equals to the Gn. So I guess that's all for the explanation about the algorithm analysis. You need to uh, practice with this one. So you can check on the e-class 
and also you can check on the Facebook. I will give you more uh, examples. I will give you more practice. I will give you questions and try to. Okay. And once you enter it, I will just give my feedback. If your answer is wrong, of course, uh, it will help you to know what is the importance of the big O. And later on, uh, after this chapter, we will learn more about the some algorithms. And those algorithms will give you the insight whether those algorithms is good or bad in terms of the complexity analysis. Okay, so that's all for this course. And we will continue with another chapter in the next video. Thank you very much for listening. See you.